Hello folks, uh, this is uh, episode 2 of uh, Squares Realm and uh, as you can see it's brighter outside today, it's a very sunny day and I've got my head shaved uh, I just said to spend some time with somebody and uh, I said fuck it, shave it all off the fuck because it was looking absolutely ridiculous with I don't know how good the light's working on this one here maybe I'll lower this camera down a bit just a bit so you can see me a bit more you know, solid in the middle but uh, I, uh, I was sort of surprised by the response to the last p podcast and how everybody reacted to it. Uh, I only expected to get about 20 or 30 hits, but quite a few people commented and stuff. And what I've noticed about that damn podcast is uh, compared to videos, they get a lot more interaction, a lot more people, you know, <clears throat> get involved and talk more. So that's something beneficial to me because, you know, a lot of my memes and stuff are so direct in their statement that you can't kind of really disagree with them they're quite frank because they're good no, I, I make good memes and stuff like that and even when I make art I don't really make fake fake hard to understand stuff unless it's poetry or something like that but my images are usually very direct so it never really encourages people to talk or have like a, a dialogue with them because they kind of go ah, get it or else don't get it and move on scrolling so this has been really good and I think this will start a new thing. Again, it's only two days since I've done the last one. I've got my head shaved, it's sunny, and relationships are going great for me. Uh, we all get fucking bullshit in life, and we have to deal with things, and things don't be going good. And sometimes it's even harder with family and all, because you argue all the time, but things are starting to look a bit better for me, just physically, in my private life. But uh, I, uh, not really sure where this one is going either. Don't really know how to take it in a direction, but we'll do about half an hour. And don't mind me, I just have to check this here to see what I have to touch so it doesn't go off the battery, doesn't go off last like I did last time. So I'll just press that. Maybe press that to keep the battery. No one's still here. I already did. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get a talk here. And uh, I'm thinking maybe talk about creativity, drugs. Uh, you know, growing up in the bog side, things like that. Uh, one of the things I was noticing there when I was talking about drugs I was actually thinking about the issue of drugs and uh, how it's so complex and how mental health, you know, and uh, drug dealers on the street kind of maintain the same scrupulous dishonesty with the people they profit from, i.e., being people with mental health problems and you know, people just want to take drugs. A lot of people get ripped off. A lot of people get sold dodgy product in the mental health system and by your drug dealers. I mean, your drug dealer Paul will say, I got this wee bit of grass. Hey, it's all right. Like, it's fucking, I got it in Malaysia. It's two grams, like, for fucking 45 quid. But it does get you, hey, man, I swear to God. And then you're desperate. You're going, well, all right, there you go. Give that there. Fuck, I'll take it. You take it home smoking. You, it's fucking shit. It doesn't fucking work. Mental health professions is no different. They work on a, a rota of profit. They say things like, you know, try this wee tablet. Ah, it's good. It's, it's, it's third wave generation drug, which means it's only new and it hasn't really been tested thoroughly like the old drugs. Now, the old drugs might not be scientifically as sound as the new drugs, but they've been tested and people know how they work. So there's a, there's a payoff there and what you want to do from it, which they don't tell you when you go into an appointment. You know, sometimes they'll give you a cheap tablet to begin with. Because uh, some of these medications work greatly when you start paying two hundred pounds for a fuck off, you know, like a couple of e vials of like Amosulprite, for uh, for instance, the tablet I'm on. Uh, I was on chlorpromazine before that, which is a two both antipsychotics. Chlorpromazine is a cheap drug handed to everybody. It's usually handed to it's kind of like uh, the speed tablet of of, uh, of the twenty first century. They hand it out to housewives and anybody with any problem really for uh because it's a broad drug and it covers a lot of you know spectrums and one way you can say that's good that's economically viable when everybody's got mental health problems but when you're an individual and you've got a mental health problem you want the best drug you can get and you aren't totally aware of what they're having you begin with but after doing some counseling anyway i got put on the another drug called amosulprite and that's a proper good antipsychotic not exactly the dearest either but uh it cost considerably more than the first drug I was on, which made me a big fat bastard and dulled my emotions and it wasn't really good, it wasn't really good. So uh, that's the side of things of Big Pharma just being like drug dealers. 
and you, you can look at the scale of things too where like people with addiction and you go oh how the fuck's he end up doing that he's a heroin addict but that's somebody you smoke weed because it's a good time you see people have to get a scale of going on what's a good time and what's a problem because uh, some of us um, uh, make excuses for smoking weed or smoking tobacco even a lot of people say, oh, I smoke tobacco, it's pleasurable. I don't mind the payoff of having my lungs rot away and they fucking nothing and they may die of cancer in fucking 34 years, leave wife's family, everything behind. That's not a problem. That's socially acceptable. But if you've been, uh, say, like abused for 15 years by some fucking disturbed fucking father or something, and then you just say, well, heroin's my only option because you know what? I don't think, no, I'll never make this better. I want to die. Then you can start to understand why a heroin addict does what he does. It's a desperation and it doesn't call if they lock these addicts up, it calls for big pharma to make better drugs if don't turn these people day a substance like heroin. You know, I really believe that uh, the positivity of mental health can be filled out. There's a lot of bureaucracy on it. A lot of young fellas go to uh, appointments with mental health and they just become disenfranchised in their first appointment because they go, these people just do not get where I'm coming from. Which leads me on to the idea that chavs and we sesh gremlins are actually the biggest minority group of today. You know, forget about blacks, forget about Jews, forget about fucking Hispanics, forget about immigrants, forget about whatever you want to call it, women, lesbians, LGBT. Where's the fucking marches for all we chavs that are just lost at age 15, 16, they drugs and night air max and have nowhere to go but a fucking... A sesh pit, they socialise with a bunch of other people, that's not franchise from society. See, people like that don't get marches. Just like uh, Bill Hicks said, you know, I'm trying to form a group. The people, the people that hits people party. And you know, I think there's a lot of potential, we just, but we just can't join hands. <laughs> that's the way sesses are. For me, when I was growing up, you know, I fucking ran around the middle with that kids in school. I never ever stood up for myself when I should have stood up for myself in certain situations, you know what I mean? And then, uh, so I just started fucking hanging about with fucking chas and rapper bits and louts and fucking, you know, boys that ended up in parties and loved fucking taking drugs, because that's where I ended up in life. But you know, I found a lot of them, them people that you just don't get with normal people. They're more understanding, they've seen more shit, and they know how crazy things can happen in life and how, you know, things can get uh, turned around and be spun the wrong way. And uh, they're the sort of people that, uh, and my sort of growing up and being getting an intellectual mindset, a mindset that thinks and questions and critically looks at things and questions the society around them, I do look at the chats and I go, Jesus, there's, they just get a hard time and what do they do really? You know, there's a big uh, fucking functional millionaires that shoot heroin every week and it's not even a, like, a, like a problem to them, it's purely recreational. But just because you've got a nightgare, uh, pair of Nike Air Max, a spider fringe, and your family unit thinks you're a Egypt. Nobody gives a fuck about you, you're forgotten about. They are the N-I-G-G-E-R-S of our Irish society in Northern Ireland. You know, I hate to use that word there, but it was Emma McCann actually said some of the long lines about the Irish, but I think it's now moved down the uh, lower sanctum where it's Chaz now you get that title, it's no longer an Irish fan. As an Irish man you've got uh, you've got rights. As a Chav you've got fuck all. A friend of mine, Sarah, it's her one of her, her her ways of thinking sort of brought me on that that idea. But don't get me wrong, there's be bastards. We bastards that needs fucking well, you know. Sort it out, like, and about punching the fist sometimes wouldn't fucking sort them out when they're breaking into people's homes and invading their privacy. You know, there's a desperation that exists in that society when you're at the fringes of everything and you're down at the bottom. You know, there's a desperation there. But what I would do, anybody watching this, if feels in that position, is to encourage yourself to think critically and soothe your mind by culture, by making art, by making culture, by engaging with it as the person you are. Don't simply be a forgotten part of society and go, oh, I'm just one of these people, I am a loser. And take all your anger out on people that don't deserve it. Take your anger out in the society that created you. If you're a child and if you're feeling this on French side, don't take it out in your ma or your next door neighbour, smash a wonder, kick a ball. Get fucking inept with your intellectual faculties and do things, affect people. Talk, get a conversation. It's things like that. Just don't be a fucking reprobate. You know, 
you're not the only one that has problems. It's just most of these people don't admit it. These are actually in the fuck it. But anyway, I'm going on the one. I'm going on the one. I don't want to go on the fuck it. Cheech up! Cheech up! Cheech up! Cheech up! It's some faint black lives matter. Cheech up! Cheech up! Aye, but I'm going on the one. But I, uh, from that direction of speaking, you can look at the, the outside of things. You know, you can certainly look at the, the, the creating as an avenue. Uh, I've been creating since I was away, and I was always on the art, art from when I was an early, from when I was a wee boy. Uh, I was told that I was gifted, and I grew up in a Christian background, very, uh, very heavily religious. My grandma was anyway, you know, she used to sit there, go to trances, saying prayers, like she'd be very deeply engrossed in the whole religious thing. And you know, I, I used to knock at it, think that's silly, but I kind of went full circle with the whole Christianity thing. Sort of falling back on that, and it's not an unhealthy conquest, I don't think. I think I'm genuinely, uh, you know, embracing uh, the idea that, you know, religion is uh, an intuitive thing brought to man that guides us in directions we, the people, can understand in our faculties of society, you know what I mean? It, it, it galvanizes a lot, gives a lot of understanding to things. And it's very vague as well, so you can't read on there, it's open to interpretation, but I try and interpret it, it honestly. The idea is for all humans. I think every religion in the world can serve you if you're searching for meaning and understanding. But I uh, but creativity, I was always told I was gifted and stuff like that when I did play school, got on it in a big way. Drew quite passionately. And uh, everybody had built me up to such an extent. In the, in, in the family household, that it was you not know, special and all this here. Now, you're an artist, no, no, Van Gogh was an artist. My uncle used to tell me, cut his fucking ear off. I was going, I'm about mad too, I can cut my fucking ear off. <laughs> but uh, I got him out there and took me on alone, even in secondary school. There's a guy, uh, I'll not say his name, but he was better than me, and I fucking envied him, me. But uh, years later, I always realised that there, that we competitors, me and him had together, spurred me on. And got me places where I wanted to go. So years later, I just returned a favour and introduced him to the same art gallery that I was on. They said to me, Square, I owe you a fucking lot for that. I said, Man, you're better than me, you know what I mean? Just you need a better chance. But art can take you like that, you know what I mean? Art can send you in directions, and it's not really a job, it's a way of life. It's being creative, applying your creative mind to many things, can keep your own psychological health, well being going and imagination. But it also can affect other people by appearing under your mind, and you know it's an intimate way they fucking they integrate with the word, and it's good, and it served me a lot. And uh, speaking about mental health and chaz, I wish a lot more chaz would create, because I think that uh, you know seeing that guy, uh, what's his name? I forget his name, John Connors or something, gets a lot of stick now, but uh, from celebrities like Brian McFadden, <laughs> fuck off, Brian McFadden, who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? But he gets a lot of jip from celebrities like that. But that was a guy who was a gypsy and made his way out, out of the caravans and the uh, BAFTA performance fucking like, uh, you know, recognition. And he went up and even used the term reptilian shapeshifters to describe him. So that shows you that your voice can't be heard and get put on that stage. And creativity can take you places. If you're a chaff, if you're a drug addict, even if you're a heroin addict, like a people that think they can't make out of it. There has been stories of people finding joy and creativity and going forward and that is exactly what I've done with my YouTubes. I was sessioned for loads of years, getting flat out, bombed off my head and I was looking around and seeing an almost wholesome thing happening where we would talk about things we normally couldn't talk about through ecstasy and uh, we shared emotions and we talked about like you know it was almost psychotherapy on sanctioned by government the early sesh days, not the way it's turned now, it's got about fucked up with cocaine and stuff like that, which I would not advise anybody, takes out a fucking heart up, make you paranoid wreck and desperate for an addiction. So, as I say, drugs are not a black and white issue, if I'm going to galvanise this talk. They're, they're a very widespread issue and they have different effects and different people. Your pharmaceutical drug, boy up the stairs, loves in the same building as me, he took a sack same drug I got. From the government, and uh, he had to put on a life support machine for a couple of weeks because it nearly fucked him up. He had a really bad reaction. Now, 
that's the same people tell him not to smoke a bag of weed because it'll fuck his head up. <laughs> you know, and you can say whatever you want about being tactile and all. But that is the bare facts of things. Nobody's really quite figured out this this uh, drug to hu human uh, transaction from government or from drug dealers. You know what I mean? And maybe that's a reason to stay the fuck away from them. You don't want to end up that way. But anyway, going off tangent sesh and seeing being on the sesh and loving through the sesh encouraged me to talk about the sesh and put it on the artwork and uh, to begin with it wasn't too well received and I went to a certain art gallery I'll not shame them or nothing because it's just a business like anybody but uh, they weren't really promotive of my ideas like that they wanted me fi 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 fixing the a sort of Zionist shell of how they feel the word, you know, the art galleries are very like that. They're very, uh, you know, they're, they're very infiltrated by by globalist thinking, and you know, there's only certain minorities allowed. But oh, we don't want you spoiling the spoiling the brew talking about stuff like that, Paul. No man. So after a while with that, I said, "Fuck it, I'm not getting to say what I want with this." And I made streets of Glen Fada. <laughs> <laughs> now this went from we well, have to understand to get a contrast to how that. Fucking went down was I was doing these wee vague paintings of Free Derry Corner with like white baller and, and this and that and that and all wrote on them and it was like oh uh, anybody could read on it but uh, the thing about Street Cycle and Fire it was so not an art gallery piece it was lo fi it was made on a 20 pound budget we know uh, we knew funding by any third party and I just took it with my own agenda and Talking to the streets, and I got a bit of backlash to begin with. One guy said, Oh, do you not know these people are, are impoverished and poor and all that? There, and I said, Well, you know, the people in uh, Bruce Springsteen's video, uh, Streets of Philadelphia, are impoverished and poor. He's saying that uh, that he's a wanker because he doesn't use a carmel twist. And then we also have to look at uh, the greatest artist of all time, like Jean Michael Basque, who uh, who always uh, involved uh, you know, uh, minority fucking like individuals and alcoholics. You know, drug addicts in his work, so they gonna go fuck themselves. That's all their political spin and how they want to package the word. The word's a lot, uh, a lot more freer when you can approach it creatively, and that's something that I like to put out there. But I, uh, I was very proud of my name on YouTube, so I'm talking about more about myself in this one too. I feel about self-indulgent, just talking about shit, you know, just falling actually a half an hour making an hour podcast. But I, uh, but isn't that funny? You know how we're all told certain things in life, but there's always other avenues, other reality tunnels, as a guy Robert Anton Wilson called him. If you ever, uh, if you don't know who a guy called Robert Anton Wilson is, uh, check out uh, a video called Robert Anton Wilson Reality Tunnels 2012, and it basically talks about who, who human consciousness, given uh, your environment and your political. Uh, you know your political background or your economic status and all that there it doesn't need to affect you totally like the Karl Marx idea of reality he said you can reprogram your conscious uh, like traps and become all our people and uh, you do this to begin with through meditating but he said you can also do it through psychedelic drugs yet again going back into the complex that's your drugs and how they affect people in not different ways but uh, he talked about how you know we're all potentially you, you you could be a postman, but you could also be a Buddhist monk. You know, and there's no reality that dictates that, only your own psychological, psychological trappings that dictate the reality that says you must stay the person you are. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I don't know where I'm going with that, but life is flexible. Anything is possible. Anything can happen. Anything can go a certain way, but you can also take any choice to change that. You know what I mean? So, uh, Stuff like that, so fuck, you know, I, but uh, yeah. I'm at 19 minutes, hey, that was a bit of a blast, I talked quite a lot there. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, I went on day one that time. But uh, I suppose I wasn't being humorous enough. <laughs> but uh, but uh, fuck. But uh, that's what I just want to say to these two, if you're watching these. I don't want to ever get uh, under any ideological hole or any ideological trap or any like I'm coming from this direction. I want to be able to come at these from every direction. 
I want to be able to spun chats from all angles, you know what I mean? I don't want to simply just talk fucking garbage and go and, and say the same old things that everybody's been hearing throughout fucking history or throughout like, you know, the rhetoric and the contemporary mainstream. This is not loose women. <laughs> Hit loose women, no stuff like that. Even though I did watch it, they try and like, because I thought this is contemporary, okay, I have to try and understand. Women are thinking, I looked at it five seconds, it was like that old ball hicks line. Don't bother, you're fucking right. Leave it the fuck alone, you know what I mean? It's trash, stuff like that is trash. But, uh, alright, so I want to talk about different things, talk about art, talk about the sesh, talk about drugs. Talk about mental illness, talk about changing, talk about growth, spirituality, science, you know, fucking anything, anything you've read, anything you've seen that you think are cool, drop them in the comments box and uh, inform me as much as I'm informing you. But uh, I, there's many things. I'll, I'm at 10 minutes here, about 10 minutes. I'm going to leave this at about 30 minutes long. But simulated reality. There's another one I've been getting under. And I haven't been under this since Joe Rogan. I'm not a fucking sheep. I've been under this since the early 90s. There was a program on the Sci Fi Channel years and years and years ago. And it talked about the transhumanist agenda. Talked about all these sci fi concepts that have leaked under reality. Now, today, not even, I wasn't even aware of it at the time. I was just talking about all the sci fi shit about the possibility of the sci fi effect of things in the future. And it was all legit. It's like even look at Star Trek and you see iPhones and shit and that, you know what I mean? It's like science fiction can really affect, you know, the outcome of reality. But uh, I've been under the simula simulated reality idea in years. And sometimes I compare life to a video game, you know. Uh, even when you're walking sometimes and you're staring at the ground and uh, you get that loop, you know, that visual loop when you're looking at the ground and it just kind of repeats itself over and over again. That's like, uh, to me, that could be buffering technology and... Uh, like in a video game where it just repeats the same patterns over and over again, they save hardware, you know what I mean? And they save hardware, as I said. You know, you, you take your own consciousness, your own human experience, as granted, you say, no, this isn't real. But the more you look at technology and how advanced the technology could be in, say, a thousand years' time, they could fairly easily have replicated this, just like we're very nearly replicating reality in Call of Duty warfare and shit like that. So I'm back onto that idea. Back on the simulated reality and uh, the idea that this consciousness is not a consciousness we fully understand. There's an old story called the Demiurge about how there was two gods and a god before that even. And about how the Demiurge created a god but this god was faulty and he was paying repentance to that higher god, you know what I mean? By making us, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. So uh, that, that's ancient texts. That's ancient, ancient, ancient texts that are already sort of talking about. You know how your your consciousness can be affected, and another great one for you to check out if you're and they blowing your mind a wee bit. Check this one out in Wikipedia: Allegory of the Cave and Brain in a Fat Experiment. V A T Brain in a Fat Experiment, which is the idea that your brain could very nearly be in a jar with electrodes going to it, and these electrodes will be sent from a brain no different from the electrodes in your own brain. And they could be very easily running this simulation. And even if this simulation was nothing like the original simulation it came from, this simulation, because it was only a simulation we experienced, would be so convincing that we wouldn't even question a more higher, like, uh, convoluted reality outside that. So then I start going, well, maybe DMT is the fucking pathway to that reality we were created from. Drugs, technology, science, boom, boom, boom. It's all bleeding together. As Leonardo da Vinci said, he said, if you want to understand the word, first understand that everything is connected. You know what I mean? And and and, and he's, he's talking about the arts and the sciences there. You know, when you're drawing a picture, they realize that the nose is going to complement the eye. The eye is going to bounce off the lips. You know what I mean? The lips are going to work with that ear. And when you're drawing a picture, it's very much the same. You know, you got to think about it. 
uh, not just history, but history, political sciences, you know, uh, uh, fucking epigenetics, uh, you gotta think about uh, social sciences, you gotta think about the pseudosciences, and all that shit's uh, melded together and telling a tale of uh, human consciousness or just consciousness itself, which could be very different over many spans and times and universes and reality. So I uh, simulated fear, uh, simulated reality, something I like to think about. It's a bit of a mind blower when you start dumping on it. But I uh, 25 minutes, folks. Uh, I think I've rambled a bit there. They wind down. Uh, they wind down. Just staring at it here. Go up my 64, folks. Since he's ever fucking played that. <laughs> Golden Age 64, it is fucking brilliant. I had played that game fucking for years and years and years. And I tell you what, some of the best times of my life I've been playing that video game. And I've just recently introduced my girlfriend to it. And she fucking loves it. She's no good with a sniper rifle, mind you, but she's fucking good enough. <laughs> I fucking blow the fucking head there with my arguments. <laughs> Blowing the fucking fist off her just No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some game, hey? Some game, Golden Age 64. So I, that'll be someone else I'm talking about in the future, is video games. Maybe tell you some things about that. Uh, some of the fucking cool shit I know about that. But uh, as I said, anything will go in this podcast. Not to stretch it too much. Not to go on too, too much of a rambling session. But I think when I'm R starting to write out, like, you know, notes of where we can go with this. It won't be such a mess of like randomness. Uh, I've got a few guys already interested in getting on. There's a guy called, uh, I'll, not, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll just call him his by his first name now, because maybe he's a bit conscious. He's called Ryan, and I've been watching him do uh, like alternative texts on coronavirus lately. And it's not so much that I agree with everything he says, but I definitely, uh, can see he has a question mind, he likes to question things, he's very logical, very uh, handy. Uh, George R. Wolf's book, 1984, he's under that whole angle of like, you know, question of farting, we can all be one day ruled by a big brother stit. So he's kind of going down the rabbit hole himself, and uh, I'm thinking maybe get him on on a future podcast, maybe two or three down the line. He says he's game enough, and uh, I've been trying not to talk to him too much on private mails because I'd rather keep the conversation raw for when we're together. So I've just been saying to him, look, let's save it for the fucking podcast if we get it made. Uh, so yeah, that's about it really. Folks, we're 28 minutes. I'd just like to say that this, this, this and this are wee bits of art and videos that I work on. They just play over all the videos and uh, there's no thingy click there. They go somewhere. They're just there to keep the screen up a buzzer and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, that's 28 minutes. I'll not go too much longer on the 30. I could probably do an hour. I'm uh, enjoying this, the special tobacco, but I'll save it for an holiday. Till next time folks, take care, all the best. See you later. <laughs>